Welcome to this session in where we will show you how you can create an ASP.NET Core application along with along with Angular the latest version available as uh, this time of recording uh, this video and we hope that you will like and subscribe to uh, our channel which will allow you to receive updates and also new tutorials and useful materials for you in future reference now before we start we invite you to go to our angular asp.net course in udemy you can get this course through the discount link inside the description of uh, this course for only 9.99 so please check out our course in udemy and see the useful course that has a lot of useful material on angular and asp.net core now we will start by creating a new project now notice that we will be selecting the asp.net core web application which is the template that contains the angular the asp.net core web api backend which will allow us to develop single page application or SPAs using angular and ASP.NET Core so I'm selecting this project I'm hitting next I'm gonna add a suitable solution name for this and I'm gonna hit the create button so now notice that when we hit the create button we will be presented with some options regarding the type and the version of the application that is available now we're gonna select the angular notice that you can configure it if you want to enable the HTTPS support or not unfortunately as the time of recording this video there are no docker support also you can select different dotnet core application or you can select the dotnet framework but it's not or it's available for the dotnet core so now we're gonna select the latest version of dotnet core we're gonna configure the application for https and we're gonna select angular now when we hit the create Virtual Studio will show us this overview page which you can use it uh, to add or edit your application you can add some connected services if you need to add application insights and so on if you want to add other things such as the WCF references and so on now also you can specify the publish for this but this is a little bit early now if we head over to the solution notice that we are represented with this project structure if we look at the first thing we have the connected services which will allow us to connect to different services you can like hit right click and add connected services which is already presented to you inside the start page we have the dependencies which contain some useful references to our like let's say new get uh, packages uh, to the analyzers if you have SDK reference and so on we have also the properties tab which contains some properties for the application instead of editing the JSON file you could just simply go to the properties of your application and edit it with the UI now also we have the dub root folder which contain our static files as you notice this is the fav icon 
also we have the client app which inside this folder we have the angular files for our application and here we will be working inside it to create our angular application and our own angular components and the different things if we go to the controllers folder we can see the web api for this project and inside it if we open it we can see some api methods that is available as a sample now also we have this pages folder which is for most of the time you will not be using it which contains some razor view pages but again since we are working with angular this will be rarely touched now we have the app settings file and we have the development version of it the app settings will contain our own configuration the app settings dot development or dot different environment will contain some different settings for each environment that you create we have the program.cs which is essentially the console application that is running our own angular web api now if we come down here we have the startup class which is the main entry point for our application and here we can uh, configure our application our uh, dependency injection and so on for this application now we have two methods the first one is configure services and the second one is configure now the configure services this is as you notice from the command will add the services to the container this will configure the request pipeline and here you can set your middleware and define them inside the configure method now inside the configure services we can come down here and we can add whatever services we want now in the old way or the old ESP.NET you used to have everything LED defined for you now in ESP.NET Core you can select whatever things that you want to run inside your application so this way your application is faster and it does not uh, has too much uh, let's say processes that needs to run now notice that i can add the course support over here also i can add some different option for it now here inside the configure i can tell my app to do what inside the request pipeline now really important point your pipeline will execute sequentially so let's say that you have this static files and this SPA static files what about if I need something to be already defined by the USB static files before I call the static files I will need to call this before the other one since they are called sequentially now I'm gonna come down here and say use course okay and here notice that I can give it some options here if I come to the options I can define how my pipeline will act and so on so this is just a really quick example of what you can do with configure services and configure now what also we can do we can come down here to the client app and notice that we have our typescript files 
which will allow us to add components and so on to our own application and we have already some components defined now I will just run this application really quick to show you what it's like and this application you will notice uh, that it's much quicker than what's uh, let's say like an MVC application but be careful when you choose to start working with the um, let's say SBA application and angular app and so on you not all of it are useful also let's say that you want uh, to have uh, session support this can be a little bit of trouble you will need to add some packages and so on so it's not like a magic solution to use an SBA application or like a framework like angular or so on uh, just be careful like make sure that this is what you really need to do rather than just follow the web development trends now here is our application has been up and running notice that this is our own components we can come down here we can interact with the angular and also we can see that it's fetched some data from the web API now the nice thing after Visual Studio 2017 we have now the ability to debug the TypeScript code inside the application so if I place a breakpoint down here notice that I am able to see and debug the code inside Visual Studio although it's running on the browser now this is some really nice and cool feature you can use and this has been available since 2017 visual studio now also if i come down here if, if i place a breakpoint and go to the fetch data notice it will hit over here and create some random data for me now what about if we want to add some new component to this application now you have two options maybe copying and pasting this or you could use the angular CLI which is a nice CLI feature to allow you uh, to have uh, the uh, uh, commands and templates and so on available for you to run so you simply come down here call the command line now if you notice I have this extension that will help me to do so I can call ng generate component these are the let's say the shortened syntax and I'll give it let's say users list okay now uh, I have to specify the module right here so it can generate it so we're gonna come down here give it the dash dash module the name of the module which is the app dot module and yes it has been created also notice inside the app module you already have it defined which is a nice and a cool thing you don't need to do it by hand now we want to add this to our application so let's do that let's go ahead and I'm sorry let's head over to the solution explorer let's go to the oh the route module is actually here let's come down here let's add the users list okay and now but we need to change the component I will head over to the navigation menu component and add a new link to this and I'm gonna call it users list 
and give it the same routing that we have so now we have everything that we need to run this new component and have it running now before I run it I'm gonna come down here okay and I'll just maybe add some message from the component I'm gonna just remove this I'm gonna add an h2 and say message over here I'll head back to my component I'll create a message of type screen string sorry and what I will do I'm gonna give it the old-fashioned message of hello world so I have created a fully new component for my application it shall now run on the browser and I can navigate to it I can uh, add to it elements add to it uh, some TypeScript uh, properties and so on now I can head over here and yes we have our message and it's already shown in the browser so this is was like a quick introduction to how to create uh, a new uh, sp.net core angular application again you can uh, check out the description and get access to our angular sp.net angular course on udemy okay you can access it anytime uh, we have also the 30 day money back guarantee and you can like ask me their questions uh, and so on and i will be more than happy to help you so I hope you enjoyed uh, this tutorial from Tutorials Excel. I hope you subscribe, like this video and thank you for watching.